how can we start to take this 3D object, the Earth, and build a 2D representation of it? It's a problem that people have been dealing with for hundreds and thousands of years. And there's a lot of different terms that are thrown out there that can start to make things pretty confusing. Like a projection, or a projected coordinate system, or a geographic coordinate system, or a datum. What do all these different terms mean, and how have people employed them and used them to help in this process of representing the Earth or other objects on a 2D surface? So in this video, we're going to work to demyst demystify a number of these terms and show you a diagram to hopefully help keep things really clear. So the first problem that people have been grappling with for a long time is the fact that they didn't know how to represent the Earth or what was the true size of it. And so the Earth is not a perfect sphere. It's what we call a spheroid. It bulges out at the equator a little bit because of the way the Earth rotates on its axis. And so for hundreds and thousands of years, people have been building out measurements of the Earth, and we refer to these as spheroids. And these measurements have differed from country to country and continue to get updated and change as we get more accurate measurements of the size of the Earth. So we have our spheroid. The problem is that the Earth is not a perfectly flat sphere. It has elevation and it has differences across the surface that are created by the pull of gravity in different locations on the surface of the Earth. So one of the ways to account for this is that scientists have created what's called a geoid, which is a representation of the Earth's surface based on measurements of the gravitational pull across the surface of the Earth. And so this is another model of the Earth to represent its, its true shape. And so we have the spheroid representing the size of the Earth, its major and minor axes. You can think of measuring from the center of the Earth out. And also this model of the Earth representing the pull of gravity called a geoid. So we have our spheroid, we have our geoid. And now we're actually going to combine those two things together to try to get a model or a representation of the globe. And there's two different ways that people have done this throughout the years and continue to do this, is to create either a global fit or a local fit. And you can think of this being the local, where I want to take the geoid and the spheroid and match them in a location that is the best fit for that region at a regional scale. This would be North America or Australia. And the other alternative is to take the spheroid and the geoid and match them together so that you have the best global fit or the best fit that would be a good match for the entire globe. So this combination of the spheroid and the geoid at either a global or local location is referred to as a datum. So we're finally at our first definition. So a datum is that combination of the spheroid and the geoid. And a couple examples of datums are at a global scale, WGS84, or a local scale could be called NAD27. So those are two datums that you might see referenced as we continue to move forward. So with the addition of one additional parameter, this datum can also be defined as something else. So if you define what that prime meridian is, or the central zero degree of longitude, we now have something called the geographic coordinate system, or many times referred to simply as the GCS. So the GCS is your datum along with that defined meridian. The GCS and the datum are sometimes terms that are used interchangeably. So all we've done so far is we have not gotten to a 2D representation of data yet. We've still just built out a representation of the Earth as a 3D object. And so our next step is to begin to finally project or take this 3D information and get it onto a 2D surface. So we have our three-dimensional model of the Earth, either at a global scale or a local scale, using one of those datums. The next step is to take that model and actually then project it onto a flat plane. 
And there are a couple different ways or methods that this can be done. It could be a cylindrical projection, a conic projection, or an azimuthal projection. And you can think of each of these diagrams as being the ways that you could take a piece of paper and wrap it around the globe. And if you shined a light from the center of the globe, how would the actual outlines of the countries or places then reflect or shine onto that surface of the paper? So it's again taking that 3D representation of the globe and there are a number of different ways to then get that information onto a 2D surface. The most critical thing to think of with the selection of one of these projections is what is the goal of the map? Are you trying to preserve the area? Are you trying to preserve the size, the shape, or the direction? Because with any of these projections, there's going to be some distortion. As, as we've seen with other videos and examples, you cannot take a 3D object and turn it into a flat surface without some kind of distortion taking place. And so the user has to know what the goal of their map is when they select the projection. Is it a map that's going to be showing more of a global view? Or is it something that is required or needed to show local information and local data? And then you can make your selection for the type of projection you're going to use. The definition for the projection or the projected coordinate system will also include a couple additional parameters. The first one being the central meridian. So where are you defining where that central zero point is in your projection? The next one is the reference latitude. And lastly, are there any standard parallels? And that would really mean, are there any places, and there could be two, where the piece of paper or your projection actually touches the globe, so there's no distortion along those parallels. And there's also a couple of additional parameters that could be added in to define a projection. So we've defined our projection, either cylindrical, conic, azimuthal, and have the parameters for where it is going to be represented in 2D space. So the geographic coordinate system plus this projection is called the projected coordinate system, or PCS. The projection is that ability to take a 3D representation and then represent it on a 2D surface. The geographic coordinate system is that datum plus a couple other parameters. The datum is taking the spheroid and the geoid and combining those together. So there you have it. Hopefully, this can help you keep a couple of these terms straight and also help you see how maps are created. Taking this incredibly complex object that we all live on, the Earth, and trying to represent this as a 2D surface. Thanks.